All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm so glad that you guys get to meet my favorite doctor, Dr. Blair. He is joining us tonight to tell us about his new book, which is Unleash Your Inner Health. So I read it in probably about two or three days, and I'm going back and reading it again because there's a lot of great information in there. So he is joining us today to tell us about his book, and glad I'm so excited that you're here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm glad you like the book. I'm glad you're reading it twice because I think there is a lot of good information in there, and you may not get it all the first time or the second time, so... I think mm -hmm. it's uh, more of a reference to keep on hand and uh, refer back to it as often as you need to. I agree. I made lots of notes, made my shopping list in it too, of what supplements I needed to get. So, Yeah, I think the time was right uh, for the book to come out. I think so many people are overweight and diabetes and metabolic syndrome and stress and anxiety and pain and so mm -hmm. many things are going on right now that uh, – uh, the, the reception for the book has, has, has been uh, pretty big. Uh, pre, uh, it's done pretty well. And uh, I think it's because so many people are suffering that they're looking for the truth. Yes. I would agree. I, yes. There's, I think it's sad the amount of people that are on medications. I know that was my life a decade ago. The, the pharmacist at the Walgreens knew me by name, which is really sad. I was on a lot of medications to be in my 20s. So, um, yeah, and that's it, that has become the norm to be on a multiple amount of medications but right. never coming off of them. Right, and that's what the medical establishment wants. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I say all the time, a, a customer cured is a, a patient cured is a patient lost. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and while... Uh, and I say in the book, I'm not anti-doctor. I think there's a place for doctors, and I think there's a place mm -hmm. for medicine. Uh, but we rely too heavily on doctors, and we rely too heavily on their prescription drugs. And uh, they're harmful. Um, they lead to all kinds of horrible side effects uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just rely on it too much. So I say let's try a natural approach first. And if you have to take a drug someday uh, or go to a doctor, great. You know, there's a place for it. But try to take care of yourself first instead of relying on a, on a dangerous medicine. Mm -hmm. So is that what led you to write the book? Or what, what led you to, because it's, it's more than a book, like you said. I mean, it's kind of a guideline and a reference book. So what, what led you to write the book? Well, I'm a, I, I've been studying and researching herbs and vitamins and natural health for 25, almost 30 years. And I thought there was a need for it because there was no other book out there like it uh, that, you know, that tackles the medical establishment uh, while not totally bashing them because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, they have technology that can save your life if it needs saving, if you're in a car wreck. Don't take me to an herbalist. Take me to a, a trauma center. <laughs> you know? That's but, true. <laughs> but we've been misled for the last 20, 30 years about things like cholesterol and pain management. And, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. there. And, and like I say in the book, I'm not anti-doctor. I, I believe there's a place for it. But it's okay to question your doctor. And it's okay to do your own research. And so that's what this book is about. It's about, uh, you know, 25 years of my research uh, thrown into a, a easy to read, hopefully, book that everyone can understand. But, um, you know, it's not just my opinion. It's based on research. And I, I quote the research in the book when I'm talking about a study. I, I tell you where to find the study. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it's out there. Uh, I say in the book, we're living in a uh, a weird age right now. We're swimming in a sea of information, but drowning in ignorance. Uh, and it's all because we just blindly follow what the doctors tell us. And I don't blame doctors. They, they do their best, uh, given their training and, and, uh, and the guidelines that they have to follow. But, um, you know, it, our bodies were designed to heal itself. God, God gave us a healing system 
uh, that is amazing. And if you provide the tools, which is proper nutrition and herbs and rest and exercise and all the things that go with it, your body can mm -hmm. heal itself. Um, you, you said something that I'd like to ask about because I have been there. So if I have been there, my listeners probably have been there too. You talk yeah. about questioning your doctor. And I had a doctor and then that I was being treated for PCOS, OBGYN. And then I started reading about herbs. And so I moved to an integrative doctor while still going to a regular OBGYN. And was basically told when I told him everything I was doing, he basically drew a line in the sand and said, I'm not going to treat you if you continue with the integrative doctor. And I said, well, I'm getting farther along with the integrative right. doctor. So you kind of made my decision really easy. So it was nice right. knowing you. But do you have any feedback or any suggestions for how we, we can have conversations with our doctors about, because I became afraid at that point almost really to go to a Western medicine doctor and then don't disclose any supplements or herbs that I'm taking because I'm just going to try to be take, talked out of it. So what right. would you it's, recommend? It's, it's hard to find a traditional medical doctor that understands any of this because it's not how they're trained. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're trained and there's some good ones out there. It's just, they're just hard to find, but mm -hmm. they're trained to prescribe a drug to cover up a symptom. Uh, they can do marvelous things with surgeries. And uh, I mean, like I said, they can save your life if, you, if your life needs saving. But uh, for everyday ailments, they are uh, trained to prescribe a drug to cover up a symptom. And that's what they're trained to do. So that's what they do. It's the only tool they have in their toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can find an integrative doctor that uh, understands modern medicine, but at the same time understands herbal traditional medicine that's been around for thousands of years, then uh, that's the doctor you should stick with. Um, but it's okay to question your doctor. And if you don't like what your doctor says, that doctor does not rule you, does not own you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you're the boss. Uh, and uh, when you're talking to a doctor, you're paying him. Uh, and if you don't like the diagnosis or the treatment plan that that, that doctor puts you on, find another doctor. Um, uh, my doctor that I see uh, knows nothing about herbs and he knows nothing about nutrition, uh, but he understands that I'm not going to take anything that he prescribes for me. I let him, if I go to the doctor for a checkup, I let him give me a checkup and then I do my own research and take care of myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do want to go get a checkup occasionally to make sure there's nothing wrong that I don't know about. Um, and, uh, for instance, a couple years ago, I went for a, a yearly checkup and he told me my triglyceride level was too high. So his advice was the typical advice from a medical doctor, stop eating so much fat. And, uh, I didn't argue with him, but I knew mm -hmm. he was wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew from my training that fat doesn't raise triglycerides, sugar does. Uh, mm -hmm. and I explained that pretty well in the book, um, uh, how that happens, but, uh, I knew to bring my triglycerides down, I was going to have to eat less sugar. So I ate less sugar and I actually ate more fat and my triglyceride level came down. So I needed him to do the blood work and the diagnosis and tell me, yeah, your triglyceride levels are too high. I couldn't have done that myself. Uh, but once he told me the, di uh, the diagnosis, then I, I knew how to treat myself. Okay, cool. Um, so... What about stress? Uh, you, you talk about stress in the book a lot. Americans don't deal with stress ever. <laughs> oh, nobody's stressed at all. Um, I can say that when my health was at the wor my worst, stress was at the worst too, along with diet. It's, it's really interesting how um, it can play such a role. But so can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so stress is my thing because that's what I did my research, my doctoral research on uh, 20 years ago. Um, stress, everybody goes through some sort of stress. It may not be, uh, you know, major stress. I was talking to someone a few days ago and she was overweight, wanted to lose some weight. She was fatigued, run down all the time. Her immune system was down. Uh, and she just didn't feel good. And I said, well, how's your stress level? And she said, oh, I don't have any stress. 
I said, really, you don't drive in traffic? Uh, that stresses me out. I said, do you have kids? <laughs> yeah, I have kids. I said, do you not have a job? She said, yeah, I have a job. And I said, well, then really, how's your stress level? And she said, okay, yeah, I'm pretty stressed. So everybody's stressed, whether you realize it or not. Uh, but in the book, I explain how stress affects health. And um, basically, when you're under stress, your adrenal glands work overtime to get you through that stress. They release cortisol into the bloodstream. First thing cortisol does is raise your blood sugar. The second thing it does is raise your appetite. And the third thing it does is it makes you gain weight. Um, mm -hmm. Then, because the adrenal glands are constantly overworked, they become run down, which causes the daily fatigue. Your immune system suffers. Uh, mm -hmm. Your blood pressure goes up because of the adrenaline raised by, released by the adrenal glands. So in my research, everything was related. It came back to stress, uh, weakened immunity, fatigue, sexual problems, men memory problems, weight gain, appetite, uh, hormone imbalance, uh, moodiness. I mean, everything that I started researching 20, 25 years ago all came back to stress. Uh, so there are several ways in the book that I tell you how to deal with that stress. And, you know, there's meditation, there's prayer, there's laughter, there's exercise, there's herbs that you can take. Um, to help you deal with the stress and to help your adrenal glands function more properly and to help lower the cortisol level uh, so that you can lose weight, so you can have more energy, so you can sleep better at night, so your memory will be better. I mean, there's so many things. Uh, so I, I spent a, a lot of time in the book uh, writing about stress because I think it is the underlying cause of pretty much everything that we deal with today. Mm -hmm. And coming from a former working in Fortune 500 company, um, there seems to be in the corporate world, <laughs> they, you know, stress becomes the daily lifestyle because I guess in a lot of places where a lot of people work, the expectation is that you're going to work 60 to 80 hours a week. You're going to do the role of two different people and we're going to put all this pressure and expectations on you. And so I feel like, as a culture, we have this expectation. We just put really unrealistic expectations on people that causes everyone to really be stressed out. Well, that's out. true. And uh, I don't write about this in the book, but I'll share it with you. But I, I actually went through that myself, much like you, uh, <coughs> much like you did. But uh, I was my own guinea pig without knowing it. Uh, many years ago, I took a corporate job and um, I was in charge of a lot of people. Uh, and uh, managed a lot of people uh, throughout the state. And it was an office job. It was nine to five, Monday through Friday, and it was good money. But I became the unhealthiest I've ever been. I gained 45 mm -hmm. pounds. My blood pressure was through the roof. My blood sugar was high. I felt horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized, you know what? It's the job. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the job that's done this to me. So when I, when I quit the job, guess what? I got better. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's all about, it's all about stress in our lives that, that causes so many problems.